Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm your host, Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com, and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, why do men act so wishy-washy, wishy-washy <laughs> when dating? Um, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new content. I shoot about four videos a week. All right, let's talk about why men are so wishy-washy. I don't get it. Why are they so wishy-washy? Um, this is actually a very serious conversation, so I've been a little bit in jest, but, or not but, and I, I want to dig a little bit deeper into what causes someone to act hot and cold, in and out, that sort of thing. And I do believe that one of the number one causes is that life gets in the way of the pursuit of love. Life gets in the way of the pursuit of love. And I'm going to share a very dramatic um, illustration of this, and it's going to be something very personal. And for most of you who have been following me for a little while, you know I lost my 19-year-old son, Connor, to an accident in the summer of 2018. Oh, <laughs> excuse me for a second. Um, and while I'm going through this experience in my life of mourning my child, um, I didn't date, you know, like the day after he passed away. But months later, I put myself back out there because I, I have been single for a little while. And um, and I and I'd like to have a mate in my life. I genuinely like to have a life partner, just like my mom and dad. That's a picture of my mom and dad who were married 66 years before my mother passed away. And what I experienced though is a roller coaster of emotions that were centered around predominantly losing my son. So while I was actively putting myself out there, I also found myself kind of on this emotional roller coaster and I was acting hot and cold and back and forth. And, and you know, while some people might say, well, you may not be ready for a relationship, in my heart of hearts, I want a life partner. It's the, date, it's the challenge of dating. It's the challenge of getting to know another human being that is difficult when life gets in the way of all this. And it's not just the loss of my son or something that's happened in your life, maybe a loss of a child, it might be COVID going on, it might be, um, be work-related issues, um, it might be uh, elderly parents, uh, it might be health issues going on in one's life. When, when stuff is going on in one's life, it can make it kind of challenging to be fully present to approach the dating process. And I know you've been so conditioned to hear that when a man knows what he wants and he goes after what he wants, everything else stops in his world and he's single focused on you. Well, that sounds great in theory, sure. But the reality is, is I mean, unless we're chasing sex, you know, which we are very highly focused on that, Men aren't necessarily highly focused on being, I want a relationship, I want a relationship from a fantasy perspective. Now, I certainly want a life mate and I'm very present to that. But I'm also aware that my emotions can be rocky at times and it might seem wishy-washy. Does that make me a bad guy? Does that make other men bad men? Does that make you a bad person because you might have stuff going on in your life? No, it's part of the process. And this is why if you're not familiar with the book by Barbara DeAngelis called Are You the One for Me? Are You the One for Me? This is a great book to really learn how to assess who's really a right partner for you. And it asks those deeper questions related to what's going on in one's life because that's a fundamental principle of vetting a person is to get a sense of where their life is at. And I'm very upfront with women. I say that I, there are times when I can act emotional because I'm mourning, still mourning the loss of my child. Um, but I'm upfront and I'm aware of that. Not everybody is upfront. This is why you got to get a picture of what their life looks like to get a sense of how stable is the ground underneath him. How strong is his foundation in life? And if his foundation is weak from a 
practical sense, well, it's going to make it challenging to fully invest in a relationship. And God forbid the foundation of his self-love is weak. Well, that's very problematic. And if you're not familiar with my book, and I always pitch it on every video, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? by Jonathan Asley. That's my book. The link is there below. Self-Love the Book. I talked about this on multiple videos. A man can't fully be present to a relationship if he's not at least loving on himself a little bit, a little bit, not like this, never do this in front of a guy, but a little bit. I'm not expecting men to love themselves this way. I'm not expecting you to love yourself this way, but loving on yourself a little bit, making that effort, that, that daily uh, investment of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Because how can we really truly be partners with one another if we're not at least on a journey of loving on ourselves? <sighs> loving on ourselves. When we're loving on ourselves, we're not as wishy-washy in our lives. And that's my invitation for you in your own personal life and to be mindful, to pay attention how a man shows up and recognize that there are sometimes there are very valid reasons why he might seem hot and cold that have nothing to do with you. Oftentimes it's always pointing the finger. A lot of coaching is pointing the finger at women. And I'm here to say, we got to point the finger at the individual. And what I mean by point the finger is at least understand their perspective understand their perspective because when we can understand we can predict behavior and we can predict behavior we can make better choices and that's what this is all about how to make better choices oh my god <laughs> i'm so parental when i teach I'm, I'm yelling because it's a wake-up call i want to invite you to make better choices in your life and that's what my channel is all about when you understand you can predict and when you can predict you can make better choices okay you got it all right, you might have something to say. Please do com post a comment below. If you have a question for me on this, I do my best to uh, read all the questions. I try to respond to some, or certainly you can go to my private group, uh, Midlife Love Mastery, to join my VIP group. The link is below. So you can ask me direct questions on a regular basis. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the cyber screen and give you a gigantic hug of love. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can use a lot more love in our lives. Thank you so much and wishing you a fabulous day. Bye-bye now.